Hi there, David Taylor or Mr. Pelagonian back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, it's midsummer, um, and uh, this time of year it's all about potting and repotting, also taking cuttings, which we can talk a little bit about as well. So let's get straight on to it. Yeah, so welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm filming this on Tuesday the 18th of July, slap bang in the middle of uh, a sort of the month really. Um, we actually, uh, this is a slightly cooler morning, so I'm, I'm sort of doing some filming. I say cooler because July in the UK has actually been really quite cool and wet. Um, rather bizarre in, the, in terms of the Northern Hemisphere, we seem to be one of the few countries that's actually having temperatures at or below the average. Um, we are pretty exceptional, I think, here. But having these sort of, you know, temperatures in the low 20s, high teens, centigrade, is actually making the pelagoniums grow really well. They're, they're really flourishing this year, growing really fast because it's their sort of ideal temperatures, really, to grow sort of relatively well, um, without being baked so that we continue to water we can continue to water quite normally um, and yeah relatively unusual because many parts of Europe are actually frying uh, but certainly not here in the UK we're getting a sort of west to northwesterly airstream most of the time so uh, we're relatively cool right now this time of year is all about uh, sort of Potting on uh, younger plants that I'm potentially going to use for future exhibitions and things like that. Uh, also potting on plants that I say got that are quite young and I'm just growing on uh, to even maybe use in the garden and things like that in the future. But the one thing I have been doing is getting some of my plants that have grown well outside, I'm getting them into even bigger pots because everybody knows I like to grow a really big sort of statuesque type plant. Uh, and we'll run through that in a moment. Now, another thing I've done is actually repot one of my fans, one of my big fans that I did exhibit this year. You would have seen it. It's the petals. We've seen this before. I potted that up into a much bigger pot uh, because I'm wanting to crunch down the top in order to fill in that base. You remember we got a, a little bit of a gap in the middle of our um, plant there. Uh, and I'm wanting to get that filled in to make it look a really good overall fan shape. Uh, so we'll have a look at that today. But there's also a plant that I'm going to pot down. Another one of my fans, which I don't think actually did that well, uh, was this Silver Splash. And that is all that's left of it. You remember, well, I'll insert a picture of it. There's plenty of pictures that I've done of it. Um, that I cropped down about three or four days ago. It's in a seven inch pot, but I think that's actually grow, going to grow better now as just an ordinary bicolor plant in a six inch pot that I may earmark for show next year. So I'm actually going to depot this today. Um, and we'll do that together now. Uh, just to show you that you really do not need to be worried about cropping the roots of plants. Um, they can be cropped and they really will grow back. You do not need to worry. Just as I have um, cut back the top of this from the huge great fan that I had. And, it, you know, it, it's already growing through. It does, it's not worried in any way, shape or form whatsoever. So we, I've got a few uh, videos that I've taken in the last week or so of plants that I have been putting on. Um, as I mentioned, the petals will kick off with that one first. Uh, basically, you'll see me um, initially cutting it back uh, and then repotting it. So we'll get on with that one now. I do chat through it. I may speed through some of the uh, video. I obviously do the editing post uh, doing this particular section, but um, we'll insert that now and you can see what I do. Right, okay. So we're, the, the main thing is taking some of that height out. This is one of the things that we've got to do here. But what we're really wanting to do is get some bulk in the middle part of this. And we've got some lovely young stems growing up here. 
I'm going to probably remove all, a lot of these blooms, if not all of them. Um, and the key thing though, by giving it a good stop down to the frame, the top of the frame, is to make these younger, lower stems really push into this gap here. Um, this is where this plant was just a little bit weak. Um, so here we go. I probably will speed through some of this. Uh, otherwise it may get a little bit boring. You know, I'm only cutting back, there's nothing too technical. Um, and so we'll go on from there. Uh, but there we are. The next thing I'll probably um, wait a few days, as as my narration says, I, I will be covering this in another video. Uh, but the next part will be to put it on. But I will just let that settle uh, for a day or two. Right, here we go then. Let's just get this out of here. So I've got to take this out as a whole. I've got to take this whole plant out with the stakes so i think i've got a hold of it all there so i'm just going to ease that up there we are just leveling it off so that i don't drop any and there is not a single mark in there at all no mealy bug whatsoever um stunning root ball very dry desperately need to drink i'm just going to shallow off some of this uh top compost here and what i'm going to do very much this is very very compacted as you would expect it's been in here for just over a year first of july last year this was potted in this pot and i'm going to get this up to a 10 inch um, clay pot this time so I'm just literally breaking off this root ball at the base just to loosen this very very pot bound just teasing the roots out I always like to do that just getting rid of a few loose leaves that are at the back here um, but I'm just soaking this in the uh, insecticide there which I just have to do because of the mealy bug now using this insecticide, this Bug Clear Ultra, I'm just soaking, letting it soak up a little bit of the base. Nothing too much, doesn't need a great deal, hasn't got any, but I'm using it as a precaution, I just have to. There's our clay pot then, so we'll put a little bit of crockery just at the base, a little bit of broken clay pot. Right, and we'll just top some of my compost onto it. Now, what I'm using here, this is my new sort of John Innes mix, which is basically the uh, what I'm using. It's two, two parts of the Silver Grow uh, with two parts of topsoil. 
Now, topsoil does vary quite considerably. I think I'm using a Levington one at the moment. Doesn't really matter what. It does vary though a bit. Some of them seem a bit lighter than others, but they're meant to be purely loam based. I think some of them perhaps have got a little bit more of a clay base to them. Um, but uh, I mix two, two and one part of perlite. Um, and that's, that's, that's more of my generalist mixture. I will talk a little bit more about the, the compost trial that I'm doing, but I have more or less concluded where I'm going to go with it, I think. Uh, and that gives you an indication where I'm going to go with it, actually, that mixture that I've just explained. So that's ready just to be put in. It's got its frame. And I'm just going to drop that down onto there. I will look for the level. I think that level is okay. I think I'll need to add some stanchions just to hold this frame in its existing position. Uh, because, you know, this is really quite heavy. But before I do that, I'll just add the, uh, the compost mix. That's fairly steady, I think. I'll do the back first. I'm just sort of checking, make sure it's nice and central, which I think it is. Just marginally pushing it a little bit. I'm sort of turning this round for ease of uh, adding the compost mix to it. I mean, this sort of uh, arrangement where you've got a fan developing like this, I mean, this would look very impressive in the garden. I mean, I, I'm doing this potentially for exhibition, but realistically, I mean, this will look brilliant just in a glass house or in the garden. Um, not too sure whether whether we've been having in, uh, in the UK this summer, <laughs> whether it would have been in the, good in the garden because it would have blown around all over the place. Um, due to the shocking uh, windy weather we're getting this summer in the UK. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just giving you a bit of an idea of, of what you can do um, with a pelagonium really. Right, okay, so let me just sort of line that, give it a tamp. This just evens the compost, do this with all plants that I've got really. Now there are a number of really good sort of strong growing bicolors that you know are generally sold by the garden centers. Now under well, this one called Petals, as I say what marketed was marketed previously as Madame Saleron but Madame Saleron doesn't flower and in the end I think any any um, retail establishments that uh, were selling it as Madame Saleron got sort of found out because they were told, I think, by a very engaging public uh, that Madame Saleron doesn't flower and what you're selling isn't Madame Saleron. And they renamed it, they gave it his proper name, which was Petals in this case. You know, relatively fast growing plants. They're very easy to grow. So if you get, get the chance to get hold of them, have a go at growing them because they're very they're super easy to grow. You know, there's uh, there's a there's a fair number of them. Carolyn Schmidt, that's another good buy colour. Um, William Laguth, uh, Lagarth, or something along those lines. You'll see it if you saw it in a garden centre. That's another very fast growing buy colour. Uh, they're all old established varieties that um, you know stood the test of time over the decades. Uh, and grow very very quickly okay there we are now i'm going to go and source a couple of sticks to use as stakes just to hold this frame in place right okay i've found a couple of good quality stakes there we are that's a good sort of v you can almost see identically where they're going to hold and what i'll do now is just tie them uh, to sum up, I mean, we, we repotted this, bigger pot, um, kept the existing frame, couple of extra stakes uh, just to support the frame and give me the option of slightly extending it at the top as I need to. We'll, we'll wait 
uh, to see whether the stop tots, which we did in the first part of the video there, um, just, you know, enable, I'll wait for those to grow on and potentially tie them in as and when the time comes, or even whether, whether it's absolutely necessary. The key for me is getting this bulk area here filled. So that's what all these little jobby, all these little shoots here are going to do. So there we go, that's uh, petals potted up and ready for growing on for next year. Now, some of my outdoor, well, what I call my summer outdoor pelargoniums, uh, including pink Capricorn, um, have grown on very fast, flowered very well. I'll put in a picture that uh, was taken a few weeks back. It was looking very vibrant. Got a little bit mashed up by all of the rain that we've had, so I decided to give it a trim back. Uh, a little bit of a prune, not too much, just basically getting all, all of the uh, the blooms off uh, and putting it on. So um, I, another one that I'm going to throw in now, you can see me doing it, it's getting it basically into a really big 16 inch bell pot. Um, so we'll hit that one through now. <laughs> Right, okay, so that's that one done. I mean, that's looking pretty decent outside. I don't need to show you, it hasn't grown. I only finished it uh, last Friday, I think. And I'm filming this on Tuesday. So it's not much more, it hasn't grown on. It's grown on a little bit. Um, now the last thing we'll do then in this video, I know it's probably going on a little bit long. I don't want it to be too much longer, but just give you an idea of the sort of things that you can do with your potted plants. Right, now this is my Silver Splash. It's, it was cropped completely down. I mean, as I say, you've seen some pictures already of how, um, how big it was, but I wasn't very impressed. I thought the growth was pretty rubbish. Uh, so what I'm going to do is completely cut this down and get it into a six inch pot, which I clean one I've got down here. So we'll use that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just pull out this pot and see what the root's like. Uh, I'll take it out the label. Now, this was cut back very hard, as you can obviously tell. That root ball is quite light. Just 
fit that out. Absolutely no sign of any mealy bug, which is really good. So the thing that you can remember, don't be frightened about your roots. Just gonna tip off some of this excess compost. I've let this obviously dry out. Um, but I am literally going to break this root ball completely down because it's in a seven, it was in a seven inch pot. But I've got to get this down into a six. So I'm just literally breaking all this compost off. You do this when it's obviously on the dry side. And there we are, breaking it all down. It almost takes it back to the previous pot size. You get an idea of uh, what it was, uh, go, what, how it was potted previously. So you can almost see, I would guess that's a four or four and a half inch pot. Uh, but we've got all this extra root here. And you can just, you can get a pair of scissors on it actually. It's that dry, so it's not gonna release my scissors. I'll just cut this back. Now this, because it's got a relatively long sort of trunk, um, because I was obviously wanting to train it, it's got loads of little breaks going on in there. Um, I want to pop this down quite deep, so I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of the base uh, because it's grown up. But this really will not be too concerned about being hacked back like this. Um, it's not having to nourish itself because there's not much growth it will want to get away so it's going to have some nice fresh compost to grow into but this is effectively what we'll be doing next month with my exhibition plants and there we are now the one thing that i do have to do of course i have to soak these in an insecticide Right, so I'm just putting a little bit of uh, compost in the base. I don't want a lot because I've got to plant this really deep. So there we are, that's just being dropped down. I'm just looking at the lining and that's, that's more or less bang on. So that's going down into the, uh, into there, I'll just uh, line it up. Tip some of this compost down inside. And there we are, so I'm gonna pop this up so that it's, drop relatively deep down into the uh, into the compost make sure it's level and i will just use this as an ordinary bicolor i never i haven't actually grown too much in the way of bicolors but i was surprised this year at the show that there weren't that many of them but that's what i do i mean what i'm really getting over here is that pelagoniums can really withstand a bit of abuse uh, to do with their roots, as long as you're doing it when they're on the dry side and don't give them too much uh, water when they're newly potted, that's the other key thing. I'm basically giving this all the moisture it needs by soaking it in that insecticide, so it's not going to get any more. This compost is just slightly damp that I'm potting it into, nothing too much though, uh, but that won't get watered now for several days. Give it a tap down. This will grow through hopefully now until the show season next year. Well, now this plant will obviously use the, um, the feed that's in the compost relatively quickly. Uh, and the fact that this compost uh, is peat free doesn't seem to hold feed as well as the old peat based compost. Uh, so I do, I am starting to feed after about four weeks now for newly potted plants. Uh, so liquid feed after four weeks uh, at full strength, I'd more or less do it every watering. Um, but the important thing as well is to sort of keep that going and it will grow away quite fast. Uh, balanced feed that is from now on, because uh, we're almost moving away from the main sort of flowering season. Obviously, for anything outside or anything that you're really wanting to see bloom on, continue to use the high potash feed. Okay, so there we are. That's trying to wrap this up. I know this video has probably gone on a little bit, but um, I mean, it's just getting over, you know, keep your plants moving during the summer, pop them on, keep them sort of rolling through. 
Don't be frightened to give them some abuse. They can withstand a good trim of the roots. So do not be frightened to cut them back hard, trim those roots hard, uh, and repot them. They will replenish and grow. Uh, I'm doing another video about standards. Uh, I have been potting on standards in much the same way that we've just done that. Uh, but I'm very busy doing a, a lot of things for the Pelagonium Society at the moment. So I'll be back in about two or three weeks' time with the next one. Uh, in the meantime, look after yourself. Enjoy the weather that we're having in this midsummer period. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.